So Jay, Jay wanted me to talk about individualization and I, I, I've never presented on this or really talked specifically about this. This is really difficult because it's individual, right? So that's the answer to every question, right? It's always gonna be, it depends. And so I had to ask myself like systematically, how do I do this? And it's not always systematic, right? Um, but one thing I have in the picture here, this is where we train uh, at Sandbrook High School. We are incredibly lucky to have this forest preserve. And uh, I think about like the, the environment is what produces results, right? And it's, it's, it's the environment you create a practice. It's the environment you have with your coaching staff uh, that's so valuable. And, and that's, that's really uh, what we're constantly focused on. Uh, so, well, I use the word powerful here, uh, you know, because to, to, that's basically what it is. So, Tuesday, we start our official track season, and I will be starting that practice with the concept that we are here to become powerful. That's what we're here to do. And that is a merging of the physical and psychological, right? Those are, those are two elements. You know, you, you can feel psychologically powerful when you, feel, when you are physically powerful and vice versa. And that's, that's what we lead with, right? It's not, all right, we're here to do this, this workout today. It's like we're here to, get, to become powerful people. And how, how do we do that? And that, that is what my phrase, what do we lead with? And that, that, is, that is at the forefront. And that is, you know, going to be different for every kid, obviously. Um, so a couple things that, that, that I kind of boil it down to this. For individualization, I'm asking two questions, right? Who are they? Why are they here? That's it. Like, why are they on my team? Why are they coming out? And that's both of those questions, both those answers should evolve. That should change. That's what's exciting to be a part of this, right? You know, we are a part of an incredible process of those answers evolving uh, at a critical time of their lives. But those questions that I'm constantly evaluating and, and on a day-to-day -day basis, this is kind of what I go back to, uh, it drives the training program as well. It, it helps me make decisions uh, for the training program, what races they're going to run, all of that. Um, so uh, the first things, you know, I'll ask, you know, we'll, we'll get we'll get some jamokes on, on Tuesday who come out who've never run and, you know, they're have no athletic history and stuff, and they're like, well, I don't know if I want to be here. Uh, that's an incredibly different person than, uh, you know, a freshman who comes in who's like, I don't know, Lucas versus Bikas, who's been training for triathlon since he was seven years old. Yeah, obviously, that's wildly different. So that's the first thing, I, that's the first piece of information I'm going to get. If there's a new kid on Tuesday, I'm going to find out their athletic history, and that's going to change things. One thing you'll see in the training portion quite a bit, I'll touch on it here, is that um, I never want someone to run with crappy form. First day, you're not just going like, uh, let's go run 15 minutes. No, that's not what we're doing. Uh, I never want them to, to program in a bad uh, pattern of stride or form. Uh, so that's not what we're starting with. So if someone has no athletic history, for instance, on Tuesday and for the first two weeks, we are going to do athletic stuff with them. We are going to just get them to a point where when they do go run, it's, it's, it's something a little bit stronger. They're, they move the needle a little bit. They can tolerate running a little bit. They're not, they're not just patterning bad stuff. So uh, for some kids, like we have an athletic development day for those kids who have no background in sport, you know, even after they've been out for a while. It's like every, every Thursday, pretty much, they're going to go in and do uh, ladders and jump rope and step ups and just short hill, uh, hill sprints uh, just to get them a little bit stronger, a little bit more athletic, a little bit, you know, they're more stable, uh, you know, their posture is going to improve, all those things. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna work on that uh, if they have, uh, if they lack athletic history. But even if they have athletic history, that's not it. We still got to check and see because I'll show you an example in a second uh, of someone who had a strong athletic history but still had some, some bad mechanics. Um, the talent is a big thing, right? You know, their, their talent level should be informing what you're going to do with them. That seems obvious, but, you know, it's not like oh, all the freshmen are doing this today, all the sophomores are doing, all the seniors are doing this today. It's, you know, it depends on the talent for sure. Uh, you know, what they can, they can probably tolerate. Um, so, and sometimes the talent of the athlete, like the aerobic 
element of it is way ahead of their mechanical element. Uh, so aerobically, they can tolerate all sorts of work, but mechanically, they could tolerate very little. So those are things we're evaluating as well. Uh, their emotional well-being is certainly something we are evaluating. I always give the example, uh, the, the easiest example I can give is that the first week of school, at the end of the summer, we have a very light week uh, of training. And I just think about the, the dramatic change in what their lifestyle is from the first week of August to the second week of August when we start up. It's, it's, an, it's an insane change when you think about what their lifestyle, wh what it looks like. So that week is going to be light because I'm going to allow them to adapt to, you know, lifestyle of school. You know, sleep is, 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 is down and all these other things, you know, stress is up. So that's a really easy one, but, you know, you're constantly checking in. Uh, I, have a, I have a runner at a D1 program. I won't mention where right now, but uh, they, they do a, a running log. Um, and I just saw him a couple days ago and he came back and he said, you know what I really miss? I want my coach to ask me, how am I doing? It's like, I miss that. Like you, that, that's the first question I ask every single day, every time I see someone. How are you doing? How are you feeling? First question. And it, it's, I do care about him, but it's really for training. Like, that's what I'm really trying to get at. Like, how is this going to inform what we're going to do uh, and maybe need to adapt? Uh, and where are they at? So uh, that's, that's constant checking in. Uh, and that's, that's effort, you know, getting around and just having those small conversations. It, it, you know, sometimes you're tired and you just don't want to have 50 conversations with kids, you know, but uh, it, it's so important. Um, obviously, and I'll show you the example, the, the one uh, kid I was alluding to with mechanics, uh, evaluating their mechanics should change. I'll show you how I do that. I'm not a biomechanist by any stretch. I'm not an expert. Um, I've learned a very basic amount of, of what running form should look, could look like or can look like and should look like in, in some cases. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll show you how I, how I, I integrate that in without with being far from an expert. Uh, and then their personality, you know, that, that should matter too. And, and that's going to apply to what events are doing and, and everything else. So uh, I'll show you all how this kind of plays out in a second. So conclusion is you've you got to be ready to care and you've got to be ready to put time in. You know, that's, that's it. You've got to be ready to care, care about these kids.